We remember Gödel as a person who fractured mathematics by demonstrating that it is always possible to find a statement that we can neither prove or disprove. At the time, he caused a lot of trouble to philosophers and logicians because he undermined the teaching of logical positivism, the central idea of which is to accept that only statements verifiable through direct observation or logical proof are meaningful. Gödel showed that even the syntactically perfect system of arithmetic is not all verifiable, so logical positivism can never be achieved even theoretically. But little everybody knew that a more shocking discovery was yet to come when Gödel would prove that the democratic constitution of the United States allows for a dictatorship to arise. In 1939 he left Vienna out of fears of being drawn into the German army. He landed in the Institute of Advanced Study in Princeton to join the most renowned scientist of the time, Albert Einstein. Eight years later, he would apply for the US citizenship and take his preparation very seriously. As well as thoroughly studying the country history, he dwelt upon constitution, and he analyzed it as a logician. A good parallel can be drawn between constitution and mathematical logic. On the one hand, you have axioms which are statements that we accept to be true. On another, we have constitutional clauses, which are untouchable juristic laws. The language of logic provides us with tools to build and prove new statements called theorems. And in law, we also have ways to rule out decisions about previously unseen cases. Not long before his citizenship test, Gödel surprised his Princeton fellow Oscar Morgenstern by claiming that he found inner contradictions that would allow for a fascist regime to be established in a perfectly legal manner. Morgenstern and Einstein tried to calm him down and silent him, fearing that his observation will fail him during an interview. Yes, back then foreigners had to be interviewed by a judge before becoming citizens. On the day of his interview, everything seemed normal. Gödel was no more enthusiastic about his discovery, and him, Einstein and Morgenstern happily drove to the test venue. Yet a conversation about constitutional flaws unfolded on that day, but not because of Gödel. Now, Mr. Gödel, where do you come from? Where I come from? Austria. What kind of government did you have in Austria? It was a republic, but the constitution was such that it finally was changed into a dictatorship. Oh, this is very bad. This could not happen in this country. Oh, yes, and I can prove it. Oh, God, let's not go into this. Unknowingly, the judge did not play his cards right, but it has at least given us this wonderful anecdote to remember. However, we should be concerned about something else here. What was Gödel's justification and what particular issue did he discover? Unfortunately, nobody bothered to ask Gödel about it. Not even a scientist as inquisitive as Einstein. All what is left to us are guesses. In 2013, Mr. Enrique Guerra Puyol, a doctor of law, made an attempt to understand Gödel's reasoning. His paper was so interesting that I decided to interview him and you can watch our discussion by following the link in the description. If you want to see more on Gödel's theorem and proof, leave a comment below.